final video in uh, chapter one. And what we're going to do during this particular YouTube movie is we're going to cover that fourth uh, objective on the uh, agenda. We're going to look at project management. And actually, we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Their entire course is focused on project management. Uh, so, but we're going to give you a kind of brief overview in the book does talk about it, but really in a fairly superficial uh, and, and kind of oversight way looking at some of the tools. So we'll spend some time on the tools, but I want to give you uh, somewhat of a brief overview of where project management is today. So when you look at project management, there are kind of four different approaches that are ongoing uh, out there right now. Uh, traditional, Agile, Extreme, and Emergency. And uh, as you look at those, uh, it, you can really distinguish between the four based on do you have a clear understanding of the goal or do you have a clear understanding of the solution? So if you build a little matrix and map those across, then you're going to use traditional project management, which is covered in the book when you have a clear goal and a clear solution. And there are lots of different techniques for actually uh, deploying that two of which are, are listed there, linear and incremental are examples of uh, traditional project management. Uh, agile is going to be where you've got a clear goal, but the solution is not clear. How you reach that goal is not clear. And so in that particular case, uh, you're going to go through either iterative or adaptive approaches to truly determine uh, what the goal, uh, or I'm sorry, what the solution is uh, that will allow you to reach that goal. When you've got a clear solution, but you're not clear what the goal is, and that sounds uh, somewhat odd, uh, but it does occur. You uh, develop a drug, but you're not quite sure what that drug is going to solve, and or you develop a uh, technology, but you're not quite sure how that technology could be used, that's an example of an extreme uh, uh, project. And then finally, emergency, which is actually the word extreme spelled backwards, is an example of where you have a not clear goal and a not clear solution. As you might imagine, emergency and extreme have ex uh, high risk, agile, less risk, and traditional, the least amount of risk because you know more. In a traditional project, you have a clear goal and a clear solution, so it's a fairly straightforward approach. Agile, you've got a clear goal but no clear solution, and thus there's more risk. And then again, for extreme and emergency, uh, much more risk associated with these uh, particular types of projects. When you look at project distribution, traditional projects are about 20% of the projects that are out there. Agile is around 70%. Extreme and emergency are each about 5%. So most of the projects out there are agile. You do need to be careful in that most of the consulting companies want to sell you traditional project management as that's the one that uh, has the least amount of risk to them. All right, so now that you've got this kind of overview of uh, project management, let's, let's superficially dip our toes into the water and look at some components that may be associated uh, with a uh, traditional project management uh, approach. So as you're looking through that kind of uh, uh, program life cycle or project life cycle, uh, you've got uh, different uh, stages or steps that you have to go through starting with, you know, what are the requirements, moving into the concept development, system design, development and testing, deployment, and then uh, operation. As you're doing that, you have to integrate with existing systems. You have to look at what is in scope and what is out of scope. How much time, one of those resources that you have to accomplish this task. Uh, what's the, uh, how much money do you have? At what quality level do you want to deploy a particular system? Uh, how many people? are associated with this. How are you going to communicate this throughout the organization and get people on board? Uh, what's the risk associated with this and what, what are potential sources of risk? And then how are you going to handle the procurement action? So as you might imagine, there's a great deal of um, steps associated with a uh, project 
uh, for larger projects, you can have a very large team that's associated with managing that project. As you're doing that, there are lots of different management tools that you can use. And again, we're going to kind of superficially talk about a couple of these uh, using a work breakdown structure, some task sequencing approaches, a Gantt chart, and then talk a little bit about automated project management tools like Microsoft uh, Project. And I don't have any uh, stock in Microsoft, uh, but the, the project tool they have has a rich repertoire of different tools that you can use to manage projects. And it's probably worth the investment to, if you're going to work within security or you're going to work within IT, to have some passing knowledge of how Microsoft Project uh, works. So let's go through these pretty quickly. Work breakdown structure, it's really where you're, uh, here's an example from Excel, where you're going out and you're just assigning tasks uh, to different people to do and you're kind of tracking uh, their duration. Here we're building a PERT chart where we're looking at all of the different tasks and how much time and starting to show the relationships uh, between those tasks. We've got, you know, five milestones, six activities uh, associated in some language of uh, prerequisite and successor tasks. Here's PERT chart, and in this case we're starting to identify what's our longest path, what's that critical path indicated in red, what's going to take the longest amount of time. So as we go to optimize a project, we want to start optimizing on that critical path uh, initially rather than uh, optimize on something that is not on the critical path. It shortens the entire project. And then finally here's a Gantt chart that kind of pulls it all together. Uh, and uh, again, my expectation is that you can't read the Gantt chart at this point, but that you get some sense of uh, this idea of scheduling and when you have hundreds of people or hundreds of millions of dollars involved with the project, obviously you're going to spend a good bit of time tracking these types of things to make sure that you stay on track and that you uh, complete a successful project. Well, like I said, this is very much a superficial uh, covering of project management uh, as it relates to what's in the book. There are entire courses on this topic. In fact, I teach a course on this topic. And uh, uh, much, much more detail, but this is the computer security course, not a project management course, and uh, you do need to know some project management and be effective with those tools as you uh, 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 go forward and work within computer security. All right, well, enough of Chapter 1. Look at that. We've gone through, talked about the McCumber Cube, the CNSS model. We've talked about uh, management and leadership, and we've talked a little bit about project management. So uh, next lesson, we're going to start talking about planning uh, for security, get into mission, vision, and value statements, and uh, organizational structures, and a couple of other things. So keep on studying, keep on learning, and I look forward to seeing you in the next YouTube video.